back to Belly Acres Kitchen. Um, I'm getting a late start. I should have started this around noon, but it's okay because Russ and I both had a late lunch and um, we're not really that hungry. So even if this is just lunch for tomorrow or supper for tomorrow, it will work out. But I am going to make beef stew. I am missing a couple of things that are normally put in my beef stew. I didn't notice till a while ago. I'm missing some Worcestershire and I'm missing some um, bay leaves, but it's okay. Beef stew, the, the cool thing about beef stew is it is a very um, rustic meal and it's something that you can just throw together with whatever you have in your pantry, in your refrigerator. <clears throat> so I do have some stew meat that I picked up. I do like to pick up um, like the pre-cut sometimes uh, just to have in the freezer for quick meals, quick evenings. So uh, this is 1.24 pounds of stew meat that I have here. It's just Rusty and I home tonight for dinner. Uh, Desi is out and um, it's just us two. Mama's still gone. She's still at, at uh, Sandy's house. So I do have some, a little bit of flour here for dredging, which I'll season that here in just a little bit. I'm gonna try something different. Mama likes this um, hamburger deluxe. She likes this in the uh, in her hamburger meat. She's it's got um, salt and garlic and onion. Um, anyway, so this is what she likes. I'm gonna try this on the stew meat. And uh, I mean, she's not here, but this is we have this because Mama likes this, and so I'm gonna try it. Um, I do have an onion. I've got some baby carrots. I've got some garlic. I don't know how great my garlic is. We'll see. I've got some butter. I've got some um, beef bouillon here. I don't have beef uh, broth, so I'll make my own. I've got some salt. I don't think I'm going to need much of the salt because I've got everything else. And then pepper. And then for the stew itself, I've got some rosemary and thyme. And that's what we're going to use today <laughs> for our rustic meal. I am going to be cooking in my uh, um, well-seasoned Dutch oven. And I may end up putting it in the oven to actually cook. I don't know. I may just cook it on top of the stove. So we shall see. Okay, guys. So if you don't have this spice, sorry, I had to put my apron back on. Rusty called me and said, we have pigs out again. So... I had to go out and help chase pigs. So this is definitely not going to be supper for tonight. But we're going to make it anyway. Uh, if you don't have this uh, hamburger deluxe, you can just do salt and pepper and garlic and, you know, whatever, whatever, whatever floats your boat, right? You can just do salt and pepper. Um, really, it's just um, getting the meat uh, seasoned. All right. And... This may seem a little odd, but I like to rinse the meat when it comes out of these packages. Don't know why, I just do. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and season this meat in the colander. And I just rinse it with cold water just to get the packaging off of it, I guess. I don't know. All right. That looks good. So while we're letting that, uh, we're just gonna leave that in the sink and let it uh, rest, um, the meat rest with the seasoning on it. The salt will make it kind of, you know, bring the juices out in it. All right, so all of this will go into my bucket here. I have, I went and bought these buckets. One is compost, 
and one is pig chicken bucket. <laughs> so basically we just alternate between the pigs and the chickens of who gets the scraps each, each time I cook. And uh, basically it goes like this. If there's pork in the scrap bucket, then the chickens get it. And if there's chicken or eggs in the scrap bucket, then the pigs get it. This will actually go in my compost bucket. Okay, so we're going to dice up these, this onion. We're going to try to do it without crying. Listen, crying for you, baby. All right, beautiful. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and rinse out some carrots. And I don't like, I mean, these are just baby carrots, but I don't like whole big chunks of carrot. So I will probably cut these in half or even thirds before I put them in the stew. Rinse them, not overnight. Okay. So I'm gonna move these over. chop these but actually I'm gonna cut them in thirds All right, let's look at this. Okay. Got a few things going on here. So I'm going to take this flour, and I'm just using this flour to dredge my um, beef. So I'm going to put some... some pepper in there. There's plain black, black pepper there. And then, it's good when you have those bags that you can just, that will set. And I'm just going to drop these right in. Smells good. Now 
All right, I'm gonna heat this up and I'm gonna cook this with butter tonight. So, I want this to start to cook down. All right, so now that that butter is nice and hot, we're gonna dredge these pieces of beef in this flour. And then we're just going to place them right in that hot butter. And you kind of want them, you want them to be a uh, single layer here because you want all sides of the beef to get brown. So even if it takes you a couple of batches, you just want to do it right. Because if you just start piling them on top of each other, not all the meat is going to get brown. You can use cornstarch also if you'd rather. All right, so I'm not real sure what happened to the volume here, but it was very distorted when I went to put this video together. So I'm just gonna kind of walk you guys through what's going on here. Um, I have these in a single layer on the bottom of this Dutch oven cooking. So then that way every single side of every single piece gets brown. If you start piling them in, you're just going to end up with a doughy mess because, you know, you've dredged them and then you're going to have that butter and then it's just going to be a big glob of dough with meat in it. <laughs> so um, it's kind of, you have to be patient on this part of it. You know, let the bottom get brown before you go to turn it. And you can check it after it's been in there for a little bit. Like this has been in there probably five minutes and I'm checking the bottoms to see if they're ready to turn. You'll know when it's ready to turn because you'll have a good crisp, like a good crust on the bottom of it. And then you can just kind of flip everything over and let it cook on the other side. This has cooked a few more minutes and um, you'll be able to see right there, see that golden crust on the bottom of those little pieces of meat. That's what you want. You want that little, that golden crust right there. And then at this point, you can go ahead and just turn everything, turn all the meat. You don't have to do it individually. If you do it individually, you're going to get a crust on each one, but that Honestly, that crust is going to fall off anyway once you put it in the soup. So you can just go ahead and stir, you know, just kind of flip everything over. You don't really want to stir it. You want to flip it because you want the other sides of the meat to get brown as well. And <clears throat> if your pan is not well seasoned, it will stick to the bottom, but you can deglaze it. Uh, you'll have to deglaze in between each batch. But if you have a good non-stick surface, it shouldn't stick to the bottom. But you're just going to let this cook again on the other side. Probably not as long as it took on, on the first side. And then we're also cooking, I'm cooking with butter. And so that flour is going to absorb all of that <laughs> fat. Uh, so I'll have to add more butter whenever I do my next batch as well. All right, so here I'm just checking them to see what they look like on the other side. Um, see if they're getting brown on the other side. So just kind of flip each one over. And I have 
decided they could cook for just a little bit longer. So I let them cook for another minute or so, and then I flip them again. Really just trying to make sure that I've got a good crust on these um, pieces of meat and that they're not just clumped together. They're not, you know, one big mess of a ball. You want them individual. All right, so I just went ahead and removed these. I put them just in a bowl, uh, set them aside. Uh, see there, they're not sticking at all. Uh, my uh, cast iron is pretty well seasoned usually, but um, I do know that I need more butter. As you can see, that uh, pot is complete, or Dutch oven is completely dry on the bottom. There's no butter left. So I'm going to add some more butter here. All right, so once that butter melts, I'm going to go ahead and add in my remaining uh, pieces of beef that are dredged. And I didn't, I thought I had more in that flour than I did. I didn't have as many. I probably could have fit that into one uh, batch, but it's okay. Um, it, it all works out. I got those um, fried up really well. Uh, you don't want to have your, your um, heat too high because your butter will uh, burn. But as you can see, the color is starting to get dark. So I started to worry a little bit about my butter getting too burnt here. So I went ahead and turned those over. I thought, you know what, it's just a few pieces of meat. If they don't have as, as good of a crust on them, it's okay. They did have a pretty good crust though. And having that extra on the on the bottom of my pan the butter and the flour that's just going to help with um you know uh when once I deglaze to have a, a almost like a gravy you know you want that thickener in your um stew because you you want your stew to be just a little bit thick not like gravy thick but you do want it to be have a little substance to it all right, so once those were cooked good, I went ahead and pulled those and um, put them in the same bowl. It's okay if it gets a little bit of the, the stuff from the bottom uh, because you're going to put it all back in anyway. So I got every little piece of meat out of there. And then here I'm just going to go ahead and add the onions and the carrots now I'm not gonna add garlic or anything else to this, just the onions and carrots. And I'm gonna go ahead and cook those down. I want those to, I want the onions to be just translucent. I don't want them to caramelize, but I do want them to cook enough to where you can kind of see through them. So I did stir those up and just let them cook. I, you wanna keep an eye on these. Um, because like here, I had to add some more butter because uh, there was nothing left on the bottom to um, saute them in because the flour had uh, taken all of that butter up. So, but just you want to stay close and keep an eye. As you can see here, those um, onions are already starting to turn just, you know, kind of mushy and kind of um, you can see through them. So at this point is when I'm going to add my garlic. So I have like four cloves of garlic here that I just uh, put through my press and I'm going to add it. You don't want to add your garlic too early because the garlic can burn. It'll burn really fast. It cooks a lot faster than onions and obviously carrots as well. You know, you, you want, you want this step for your carrots because you want them to, uh, be completely cooked whenever you you serve your stew. So uh, sauteing them with the onions, it gives them flavor because they will absorb that onion flavor. And then it will also uh, help in the cooking process because then they're partially cooked by the time uh, you add all the soup in. So after I added that garlic, I just gave it a quick stir, um, making sure to get all of the garlic in there and all the garlic goodness. And I'm not going to cook this very much longer. Um, with just sauteing it because like I said I don't want that garlic to burn and garlic burns pretty quick especially when it's um, put through a press or minced up it, it'll cook very fast so just kind of give that a little stir there and I'm going to keep my eye on this and I'm going to stir it occasionally 
just watching that my garlic does not burn. But I let it cook for another about a minute and a half, and then I went ahead and added my meat back into this mixture. Now, if you see the meat, it is um, very... Um, like there's a good crust on it and but it's still individual there it's not like a big mush now here i'm going to add some beef bouillon i don't have beef broth i don't keep a lot of broth other than the stuff that i make myself i don't have beef broth i have a lot of chicken broth so i am going to just make my own with bouillon so i added my beef bouillon and now i'm going to add about eight cups of water to this um I didn't measure out the bouillon, but I did measure out the water. If you want a more precise um, recipe look uh, for the beef broth, you can look on the back of the bouillon um, jar or look at the little packaging if you're using the uh, little bouillon squares. But I knew I was going to need at least eight cups of water because I'm making a pretty big um, batch of this. At this point, I'm also going to add in my potatoes. And I cut those potatoes um, pretty big um, chunks because I know I'm going to be cooking this a while. You don't want to cut them too small because then you're going to end up without potatoes. And there's that second um, batch of water. So I did four cups, added my potatoes, and then four more cups. And then I give that a quick stir, make sure nothing's sticking to the bottom. And then I'm just going to go ahead and add my thyme. This is just um, dried thyme. If you have fresh thyme and fresh rosemary, that works really well too. But um, just dried thyme and rosemary. Be careful with the rosemary. It can overpower, so you want to do less of it. Uh, thyme is pretty potent too, so it just kind of depends on your flavor palette at this point. So we're going to give that a quick stir also. Uh, make sure everything's stirred in good. And then we're going to, oh, got to taste it. <laughs> Just checking for salt here. Uh, I didn't add any salt to this because, you know, I had the uh, seasoning on the meat and then I had the bouillon and bouillon has a lot of salt in it. And now I'm just going to cook this on low for probably two or three hours. Uh, you can move it to a different burner if you need to on a gas stove. I've, you know, I usually have to move it to the smaller burner and turn it on low because the bigger burner on low is still too high for a slow cook. You can also put it in your oven and let it cook in the oven. You just, it's a little bit easier cooking it on the stove because as you pass by, you can take that lid off and check and stir it if it needs to be stirred make sure it's not sticking to the bottom all right you guys so this has been cooking on the stovetop on low for about, about two and a half hours and when i say low it's on the smallest burner on low but it is perfect like it is done and it's perfect and that um flour that you dredge it in that's what makes it a little bit thicker i didn't put um I like to put barley in mine. I don't have any barley. So. Oops. Look at that. I'm not going to eat very much of this. Russ and I are going to try it tonight. But um, because this is really made for tomorrow's lunch. And I'm going to make some biscuits to go with it. But it smells so good that we have to try this. So we'll let Rusty try it first little bitty bowl for the both of us. Mm. It's hot, hot. Yes, it is. This is what I want to see, everybody to see. Wow, look at that. Meat just cuts with a spoon. Yes. Mm. Is it good? Perfect on salt and everything. Yes. Definitely enough to warm you up on mm. a cold night. Absolutely. <laughs> now the chef's turn to taste it. So I'm really excited about this. So I love carrots and I love the bigger pieces of carrots. I don't like whole 
um, baby carrots, but I do like to cut them in these pieces. And mm. So that rosemary and thyme, putting that in as an aromatic into the soup, just so good. I love how the potato absorbs that rosemary and thyme. It's perfect. Yes. Mm -hmm. So that's my take on um, beef stew. Uh, like I said, I do like to put barley in mine, but I don't have any barley, um, which is no big deal. It's still really good. Um, simple, easy meal. Um, definitely want to plan for it so you can cook it throughout the day unless you can cook it in your instant pot. Uh, my instant pot is not big enough to make a whole pot of beef stew. But tomorrow I'm going to make some biscuits to go with that and that's our lunch for tomorrow. I am going to finish this bowl. <laughs> uh, Russ and I probably will. So anyway, I hope you guys like our videos. If you do, please hit the like button. Subscribe if you haven't already. Yep, share with your friends. Leave us some comments, you guys. Let us know what you think of this amazing beef stew that rachel's made for us but most of all don't forget to smash that bell and get notified of the next new video when it comes out yep until next time you guys god bless see ya